This video is the continuation of a series of videos I'm putting together where I discuss the biological basis of flesh knot hand syndrome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the history of the genetic and biochemical research and how we became how we came to understand how flesh knot hand syndrome works. Now, if the, for those of you who don't know what flesh knot hand syndrome is, it's an X-linked recessive disorder, which means that it affects mostly males. It's involved in a, a person who has Lush Hand Syndrome. Some of the symptoms include spastic movement, lack of control of your motor functions, uh, uric acid overproduction, kidney stones, and mental retardation. And the one, there's other symptoms as well, but the one symptom that really characterizes Lush Hand Syndrome and really sets it apart from other genetic disorders, other uh, diseases that are out there is self mutilation. The person will take their fingers and their lips and they will bite them, they'll mutilate them. And so, a lot of people with Lesch Nye Hand Syndrome choose to have their teeth removed. As this isn't necessarily a voluntary thing, this is not necessarily something that they're wanting to do. It's part of a cycle of self mutilation process that I explain more in the homepage of the Lesch Nye Hand syndrome website that I'm putting together. Uh, please see the link in the description box if you're watching this from YouTube. Anyway, history of Lush and I hand syndrome. From about the mid-1960s to the mid-1970s, that's when our understanding of Lush and I hand syndrome really came into focus. We were early 60s, early mid-60s, we were just discovering this let this uh, genetic disorder, we're starting to understand that this was separate from other genetic disorders that we were aware of. This was its own unique genetic disorder. And we figured out in, in about 1965, that's when scientists suspected that it was an X-linked disorder. This was because they had studied uh, groups of families where this genetic disorder was prevalent. And so they were able to figure out, they were able to look at the patterns of inheritance, um, and they were able to figure out that this was in probably an excellent disorder. So in families that were affected, if you have a, uh, if you have a daughter who has, if you have a, a woman who has like an uncle who's affected, she might be a carrier, and her children might have Lesh and I hand syndrome. But if you had a man in the same family who was a, uh, like her brother, a biological relative, and he goes and marries a woman from a different family, hopefully from a different family, their children are not going to have Lush and I hand syndrome. Unless, of course, there was something that was in her family as well. So this is something where women are the carriers, but a man, he's either going to have the disease or he isn't. He's not going to be a carrier for the trait because he only has one X chromosome. And I go into more detail about that in other in my other videos. The, in 1966, which was a year later, they took tissue samples from women who were carriers of Lesch Nye Hand Syndrome and they analyzed the enzyme activity. Now, the enzyme involved in Lesch Nye Hand Syndrome is called HPRT. Now, that has, stands for a very long thing, but we're just going to call it HPRT. And this enzyme is involved in recycling molecules in the cell so that the person is able to the person's able to have their cells function properly. So there's a couple different molecules that are recycled using HPRT, but unfortunately somebody with Lush and I hand syndrome, this enzyme is missing. Now for a woman who is a carrier, uh, she has two X chromosomes. Uh, one of the X chromosomes will have the healthy allele, they'll, so they'll be making uh, they'll be making HPRT, but the other X chromosome will not be making HPRT. The gene on that, the gene on that chromosome that functions to make the HPRT enzyme is not working properly. So there's a mutation there that's making it where we have an HPRT protein that doesn't function properly. So these women had, were able to produce enzyme, they were able to produce enough so that they didn't have any symptoms. Um, maybe once in a while they might have a slightly higher risk of gout, things like that, but having half the amount of enzyme is more than enough to compensate for the fact that one of the one of the genes has a, is making a corrupted version of the enzyme. This is how many, many recessive disorders actually work. You'll have one enzyme, you'll have the enzyme on the chromosome from one parent that's functioning properly, and the enzyme on the 
homologous chromosome, the other homologous chromosome, is not functioning properly. So that is how a lot of genetic disorders work. But having enough, having half the amount of enzyme, it's enough to have, you know, say 90% of the activity. So it might take slightly longer for the enzyme to process all the molecules it's supposed to process. It takes slightly longer for the enzymes to do all of its job. But it does its job just fine. It's still within a very reasonable amount and it doesn't cause any problems for the woman. Or, and uh, so 1969, we have people took used human mouse somatic cell hybrids. Um, so what that means is you had a human cell and you had a mouse cell and they fused them together um, to make one cell and then they also had the nuclei inside and the nuclei inside also fused to make one nuclei and they're able to do tissue studies on this and help understand their understanding of the Lesch Nyhan syndrome uh, disorder. In 1972 um, they discovered mosaicism in the hair in the cells of the roots of hair of in the root cells of women's hair who were thought to be carriers of this disease they found that they had they found what's called mosaicism now what mosaicism means is that some of the cells were producing enzyme and some weren't um, this is something that would be characteristic of an excellent trait you're not going to find this with the you're not going to find this with any of the autosomes uh, that's most of your chromosomes in your body are autosomes, so they're the chromosomes that are not chromosome X and chromosome Y. So chromosome 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc., all the way to chromosome 22, those are all the autosomes. But the X-linked, the X chromosome is a little bit different, because men only have one X chromosome, of course, as uh, most people know, and they also have one Y chromosome. And so we have one X chromosome that will produce uh, different enzymes, different gene products, uh, different things their body needs. Now, a woman has two X chromosomes. And this is kind of an interesting situation because we don't want her to have double the dose of a lot of these gene products. That could cause problems. So the way the body uh, regulates this and makes sure that the woman's getting exactly what she needs is during the embryonic development, the woman's... Uh, inside a female embryo during uh, her embryonic development in her mother's womb, one of the X chromosomes will turn off and form something called a polar body. The other will stay on. And but it's random. You don't necessarily you won't necessarily know which one's going to turn off. And this is something that happens uh, it doesn't happen in the first cell, it happens a little later in embryonic development. So in some cells you'll have one X chromosome off and some chromosome or Sorry, in some cells you'll have one X chromosome off and you'll have the other X chromosome on. In other cells it'll be the other way around. So some cells will have the X chromosome from mom active. Some cells will have the X chromosome from dad active. And in the case of Lesch Nyhan syndrome, you'll have uh, what they found was that for women who are carriers, some cells are producing ABH PRT enzyme and some were not. Now the cells that were producing the HPRT enzyme were able to compensate for the cells that were not. So the woman was able, women who are carriers for this are able to live a normal, healthy, happy life. Now, <clears throat> in uh, excuse me, in 1976, uh, they this is kind of after we established that, or kind of after scientists kind of had a pretty good handle of what was going on. They started studying the frequency of mutations of new mutations in males. So they're able to figure out which males who had Lesch Nyhan syndrome were mutants and were the though they were the first person in their family to have Lesch Nyhan syndrome. It was the cells that produced the sperm for the father or produced the egg for the mother. There was a copying error in the genetics somewhere in there. So they and when they ended up producing a embryo and producing a baby later on, they there was uh, the error ended up being expressed and the person ended up having Lesch Nyhan syndrome. So the way what they were doing is they were looking at males who had Lesch Nyhan syndrome and they were doing biochemical and tests on the mother. Um, it was pretty easy to figure out okay 
who, which males have Lush Nyan syndrome because the symptoms are very obvious, they're very clear, they're not easily confused with other genetic disorders because um, by this point people had a pretty good grasp, researchers had a pretty good grasp on what defines Lush Nyan syndrome. And so the, the women, they're able to do different biochemical tests, they like do an enzyme analysis, things like this, stuff I mentioned earlier, and they're able to prove that she was either she was a carrier or she wasn't. And this baby was the mutant for this. This baby was a mutant for this particular genetic disorder. All right. For those of you who are interested in learning more about Lush Nye Hand Syndrome, please see my website. Uh, this video is going to be embedded on there. And please see my other videos on the biology of Lush Nye Hand Syndrome. Also, on the homepage of my website, I have videos of individuals who have Lush Nye Hand Syndrome. And I think it's important for those of us who are going for genetic research, this is something my professor for the class I'm making this video for has instilled into us. She wanted us to find videos, find actual cases of people suffering from whatever genetic disorder or who have whatever genetic disorder uh, we're researching. That way we can get kind of a grasp of what it's like to be somebody with this genetic disorder. And to be honest, before I did this research, uh, I was, I had a very different impression about what Lush Nye Hand Syndrome is than what it actually is. And the fact that she had us do research like this really opened up my eyes and really helped me to understand a lot more um, what it's like to be somebody with Lush Nye Hand Syndrome, that it's not the, that it's a severe, that causes severe disability and probably a lot of pain with the kidney stones, things like this. However, the person is still able to live out their life and still be happy. Um, even though they have to have people taking care of them for their whole lives. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, also, I have uh, another website, greenslug.com, which is, and slug is spelled with two G's, so it's G R E E N S L U G G.com. On that website, I, uh, I educate people on other things, so like, such as uh, different scientific issues, um, different social issues. Um, I try to really, I focus really on the link between Christianity, the Bible, science, dinosaurs, uh, things like this, and really help people to understand a lot of these things and really make sense of them. So anyway, this is Greg, out.